te cante esta rumba mía. Esta es la rumba. Oh, tin, tin, de, oh. Esta es la rumba. Oh, tin, tin, de, oh. Oh, no, no, tin, 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 de, oh. Tonto Sanchez and Terrence Blanchard visited the Rialto Center for the Arts at Georgia State University and performed music from their recording Chano y Dizzy. We sat down with the artists to talk about Chano Pozo, Dizzy Gillespie, and how music impacts community. Chano, Chano Pozo, you know, was, um, was actually a, a really tough street cat from, from Cuba. And he was uh, pretty famous in Cuba before he came to New York City. Uh, like, you know, uh, uh, in the early, late 30s and uh, early 40s. He was a tough street cat, uh, what they call rumbero, a guy who plays in the corner and hangs and, and, and play. And he was also a great dancer. He was a great dancer too. He could dance really well. And he knew, he had a lot of ideas and he had uh, tunes that were popular in Cuba before he came to New York City. I think he came to New York City uh, in like the very early 40s. And, and what happened is he came to New York City and Mario Balza, who was the musical director of the Machito Orchestra, and it was also, he was also Machito's brother-in-law, he played with a lot of the jazz bands in New York, not only the Latin bands, the jazz bands, and he introduced him to Dizzy Gillespie. And so Chano, you know, I mean, I, I think it was just a great thing that happened because both of them were experimenting at the same time, Chano Pozo and Dizzy Gillespie, it was all new territory. old and you start to do a little more research, you start to say, well, wait a minute, that rhythm's kind of closely related to something I heard from down in, in Cuba, or something that I heard from down in South America. Um, that's when you start to see how all of these things start to come together, and then you carry it forward to go to bebop period with Bird and Dizzy, and you start to hear Dizzy do some rhythmic things, and you say, well, wait a minute, oh, okay, I'm starting to piece all of this together and starting to see how these guys were not just people who were great musicians, but they were visionaries and people who really uh, studied music from around the world. So it kind of opens up your own thinking. It starts to make you think like, you know, well, I can't be stationary. I, you know, I can't be sedentary. I have to constantly move, constantly grow. When you look at New Orleans music, you look at Latin music, those are social things that are very important to those communities. You know, those are the, those are the things that bring people together. Uh, you know, whenever you, whenever you hear those drums, it can be a social gathering anywhere. It doesn't have to be in a concert hall or a club. That's where it evolved to, you know, but that music came from out of the streets, just like the music in New Orleans, you know, there's no difference, you know, and, and, that's, and, and since it came from the street, it has this direct correlation to who we are as people, right? So that's why when you hear it, people automatically respond. <laughs> 